why is Fogden so hated? If you have been on Twitter or Instagram and especially YouTube, then you may have heard of Fogden. Especially if you go on Twitter, you may see hate tweet after hate tweet going in at what just looks like a young lad watching football. Fogden is a disease. He's scum of the earth of the worst kind. Now nah, I just had the greatest idea ever. Tell Fogden to Qatar, slip cocaine into his pocket, and watch him get beheaded during one of the matchday vlogs. No more come on England from that pasty inbred when his head is being fed to a camel. Fogden currently sitting at 1.1 million subscribers on YouTube. And if you are a football fan, you may seem to never get away from his face. Wherever you go, you seem to always find him. You go on Sky Sports, there he is. You go on some podcasts, there he is. You watch the World Cup, there he is. You watch the Champions League, there he is. The guy even has a vault in the Ballon d'Or. In today's video, I go into why Fogden is the most hated football YouTuber, and I will try to remain impartial and to give both sides of the argument. For people who support him and say that he is overhated, and for others who really do not like him and find him to be out of touch. If you guys do enjoy, let's hit 2,500 likes. And just to confirm that 83.4% of you who has watched my recent videos are not subscribed. So if you can hit that sub button it really does go a long way and let's get straight into it but of course a shout out to the longtime sponsor of the channel u7 buy if you play fifa 23 and want to improve your team but not go for the effort of actually playing the game then make sure to go down below in top of the description to u7 buy and make sure at checkout to use code visa for five percent off in, in the football youtube scene there is definitely different types of the community some tactical like t4 football some more personality driven like spencer fc or the irish guy and others that are known for football vlogging which the king in this industry is most definitely fogged now now the topic of football vlogging is definitely a heated one in the footballing world. There's really two sides to the argument here. If you are pro football vlogging, you may say that there is no problem in showcasing what it's like to be a football fan at a game. Not only does it showcase a football club and an atmosphere and the experience to fans that may not be able to go or other fans to see how good the club is and their community, but it can also give fans of the club who may not be able to go for work reasons, for financial reasons, because of location reasons reasons that it gives them the opportunity to feel like what it's like going to the game and you can also say that it can also give fans who did go memories of the game in the atmosphere that is if you're pro football vlogging now if you are anti football vlogging you may say this number one and the main argument that i see is that they are taking a ticket away from an actual fan a match going fan who may not be able to go because they just can't get a ticket in time it's sold out and now this person is taking tickets away from the actual fan base this argument I do agree with as long as the actual game is actually sold out. Which for the most part if games do get sold out they at least usually go on general sale. Unless if it's usually an away end. Another argument against football vlogging is that they don't like the fact that people are monetizing and profiting financially of using their club for views. For me personally I think that this is short minded as for the main majority of people that I know that does do football vlogging none of them actually makes really any profit or really make break even. As a person that does go to games quite a lot and has vlogged a lot of games before in the past, I can tell you absolutely that of all the vlogs that I did, I didn't make break even once. Of course, if you go on Fogden's channel, you can see that he always ends up at highly sought after games in Europe, in the Champions League, in the Premier League, and of course, most recently, in the World Cup. The World Cup that just passed caused a lot of arguments and a lot of problems for Theo in the football community. Largely because he worked a lot alongside Crypto.com, which they paid for his tickets to go to every single game for the World Cup, attempting to break a world record to be the first person to go to every single game. Of course, you may be saying, wait, but for the third match round games, they play two games at the same time. Well, you see, he starts off the game in one ground, watches the first five, 10 minutes, and then leaves the ground immediately, and then travels across to the next game, and then they may watch the, the last 20 minutes of that game, or maybe even less. Wish you may say what's the point of that and 
that is fair enough. Fogden got a lot of heat over the entire length of the World Cup, and a lot of them are going in on the fact that they didn't like seeing his name pop up. Not only was he doing work for himself and crypto the World Cup, going to each game and documenting it and showcasing the World Cup to people, which I have absolutely no issues with that, people also didn't like the fact that he was on Sky Sports a lot. His regular appearances on Saturday Social, people may ask why do people care about his opinion when he has no real involvement in the game. Alongside that, one video that made the rounds and went viral on social media was his opinion that his flop of the World Cup was going to be Cristiano Ronaldo. He got endless amount of stick for this shout and in fairness to Theo, he wasn't wrong. The Ronaldo fans I remember went in at him for weeks upon weeks upon weeks and to be fair, looking back on it, it does look like it was quite harsh. However, after the World Cup, he featured on the Fellas podcast ran by Cal Freezy and the Burnt Chip and on the podcast, he spoke about his opinions about the hate that he got on social media while at the World Cup. This is what he had to say. So to, it was pretty difficult during the World Cup to like just see the timeline just going for me. People calling me mm. a kid. Do, do you have, do you, does that stuff get to you? Yeah, it does. It does. I, I remember we had like some days where we were working 15 hours, going to four matches, running around. Then at the end of it, we were. I was working with my editor to make sure what I want and then the thumbnail and then the title. And you finish like, what is a 15 hour shift? People don't realize that because they just say, oh, you're going to football games. Yeah. But as you guys That's know, there's a lot yeah. more to it. Mm -hmm. After the game, you're on your phone, you're on your laptop working away. So when I, I was finishing days at like 2 a.m., and then there'd be a match at 10. So I'd be up at eight. So I don't, I'd be barely getting any sleep. Yeah. And I'd be checking Twitter at the end of the day. You're saying like, what's this all for? Like, why do I bother? Now, when I listen to that, there's definitely parts of that that I really wouldn't say. There's two rules of life that I found. Number one is that no one likes to see anyone succeed in something that they wish that they did. And the second rule of life is that no one, and I mean no one, likes to see someone complain about succeeding in a job that they wish they did. In this clip alone, he goes into the fact that he is watching four games in one day, filming himself, having an editor with him, and then having a 15-hour shift, going to bed at 2 in the morning and waking up at 8 in his own words. Now of course as a YouTuber myself I can say that it is definitely a dream job to be a YouTuber and I will back him when I say that it is definitely nowhere near as easy as what people like to think that YouTube is. But I would say this is that in comparison to actual jobs, people that work 9 to 5s or people that work, you know, longer hour jobs. They work as engineers or, or as brickies or working in an office or God, even if they're working in a construction yard or you know, doing a labor kind of job like that. Then if you're a person that lives that kind of lifestyle and you watch a clip of a YouTuber, especially one that goes to World Cup games paid for, then absolutely it's going to rub them the wrong way i can definitely see why he may come across as out of touch in this situation and let's get into the other reasons why people may not like fogden because i don't want to completely back him completely because i want to try to be impartial when things that i see is a bit overheated i will stand by that he deserves a bit of stick and we'll hope that he can learn from it so number one is the newcastle united situation newcastle fix spurs of course a newcastle fan collapsed midway through the game the game was stopped Theo was there because I believe this was their first game since the takeover and in the video he zoomed in on the area of the fan that sadly collapsed but fortunately is okay and in the thumbnail and in the title he basically try to use the fact that a person collapsed for views. The title being Fan Collapses at Newcastle Takeover Party versus Spurs. Of course, afterwards, he changed the title and he apologised very soon afterwards. Now, of course, this was a very stupid decision by Fogden, who, of course, he knew that the title and the situation would get him great views. Since then, I don't believe he's done a title similar to that since, and let's hope that that continues. The next big scandal of Fogden is with the English fan base. The hardcore match going English supporters typically have a massive dislike for Fogden because of an incident that happened in Bulgaria in 2019. When Bulgaria played against England, he was in Bulgaria at the time and of course this was the infamous Raheem Sterling incident as well. He uploaded a video and got 2.15 million views. The main problem that people found that he had a story that he got hunted down and chased down by Bulgarian 
ultras saying that they were followed by a group of Bulgarian ultras while at the match in Sofia. Going on podcasts like the Antisocial Podcast and the Happy Hour Podcast telling about the story. The problem that is found with this is that if you speak to any England fan that was there at the game, a large majority that I find online seems to debunk this happening at all. If you type up Fogden and Bulgaria on Twitter, you can see many England fans saying that he made up lies about being attacked, claiming that all England fans were escorted back to the hotels with the police. Now, of course, there is no proof that any of this went down, so it is all down to your own interpretation in terms of who you believe. So when I go into the things that people dislike Fogden for, I'll be honest, there's not really too much that he's done that is really that wrong. He definitely has made a few mistakes as he is quite a young lad, and we all hope that he learns from it. People may not like him as a personality, they may find him annoying, which of course that is completely fair to say as that is your own opinion. As a person that is quite neutral, he definitely has a personality that people will definitely not like. As people may find him very outgoing and very loud and people may take that as annoying and people may go in the fact that they believe that he could be quite spoiled and for other kind of nothing reasons that people don't like the fact that his dad was a Tory councillor, that he was a member of the Conservative Party. For me, it's personally irrelevant, but I want to put that out there because some people just don't like Tories, I guess. So if I break down the situation of why Fogden is hated by a lot of people, I find it that people do not like his personality a lot. They find him quite annoying and outgoing. And I do believe that there is jealousy that people don't like the fact to see a young lad do well in his career and he's going to football games as a job which is of course a job that anyone would love to do. Some fans try to gatekeep their football clubs saying that oh why is he here because he's not one of us which I, I get that to an extent but in reality there's a reason why his videos do well because there is clearly a market out there of people who are interested in seeing how a team is doing. People want to see the best teams in the best matches and they want to see what it's like from a fan's perspective or from the crowds themselves. That is why his multiple videos in Germany and in the World Cup has done so well. They want to see big moments and what it's like in the crowd and that is something that will always keep Fogden on top. He has nailed that side of the football scene and has kept up with the YouTube trends to keep himself relevant. People may not like the fact as well that he is everywhere in terms of Sky Sports on Saturday Social and on Sky Sports News and there could also be that jealousy side again saying why is he here because he's not a footballer. Why are they taking his opinion seriously? Which I do believe is fair as a content creator myself even though I would love to get invited by Sky Sports and of course I don't really blame Fogden for accepting any of this of course he will he will keep on being given opportunities to keep going games by clubs paying for his tickets and potentially expenses covered the club will get something back in return which is publicity despite whatever opinion that you may have on Fogden he gets views and he gets eyes on clubs and when it comes to clubs that is what matters. There is a cycle with YouTubers now that typically the more hated they are the better they seem to do. The bigger they are the bigger eyes therefore the more people will want to try to see them fall and that seems to be the story of Fogden. In my own personal opinion, I think Fogden is a smart person in the YouTube scene that he knows exactly will get the attention and would get the views. And because of his continuous strides towards views, that it would make people feel a certain way about him. As a person that has met Fogden years ago, and even a person that even has had, I guess you could say, quote unquote beef. I mean, it's not really beef. He made a diss track on me like years ago, but it was really all for nothing. I understand completely why people may not like him. Because people, especially in the hardcore football scene sees most influencers as a bit gimpy and they will say the same thing about him than what they would say about me and that is just how it is really if you're in the world of youtube and you make videos in the way that he does then you will always get this hate but of course as of speaking he has 1.17 million subscribers so he's clearly doing something well and his channel is the healthiest that it's ever been so i will leave it to you guys to make your own opinions on fogden do you hate him do you dislike him do you not mind him do you love him tell me your thoughts down below thank you all for i believe almost 315,000 subscribers and i just enjoy doing these video essays and i think fogden is a very interesting character so tell me your thoughts down below thank you for your time and i'll see you next time